talk about the glory of the Lord, it's in our passion book. The first thing I start with the story, since there was one thing that Jesus did is he always told stories. Because it gets people's attention, it doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are. But anyways, it was in 2008, in April. I could even tell you the day if I looked at it, but I'm not a date person, so I don't remember that. And so anyways, my mom dropped me off at church. And she is just, I was a super awkward, shy person. Like, and I, I was just kind of standing around, but luckily, uh, one of the ushers introduced me to a person. So, but she was a shy, insecure person too, so you can imagine the two of us standing there. Uh, she was sitting there, I was standing there with my hand clamped on the, uh, the chairs in front of me rather than the pews. And this other guy right next to me, he was just like so caught up in gab, like lips and pants. And I always wondered, how can people do that? And I was just so amazed, and yet at the same time I was so miserable because my, you know, I don't like sitting, and I don't like standing around because then my legs start hurting, and it's like worship lasts in eternity. <laughs> I'm like, when is it going to be over? Like, I felt the presence of God, but it's like, you know, I wasn't really right with God. So I just felt that, like, and then guess what? My mom came back from visiting Grandma, and she... She came up and I thought, oh no, family, this is going to be awkward. And so she came to me after she wanted to hold the Holy Spirit. I already had, but I said, sure. And so I, I just got like less of me and more of Him. And it's like I experienced more of the glory of God. And so I lifted up my hands, which I had never done in church, although I'd grown up in charismatic churches my whole life. And just from now on, uh, I guess I just got right with God and the Holy Spirit before, but I've spoken other tongues, but I didn't really, you know, I wasn't really passionate about God, I didn't really know Him, He didn't really know me, so, from then on, I had this time in my room, and it, it was, sometimes, it, I just got so distracted, so ADD-ish, all of my ADD, and I had to find a spot, and so I found a spot in my room, which I did not get distracted, but little things like, oh, there's lint in the carpet. And so I found it, and that happens to be my closet there. And so it, it's literally a closet singer, or a closet worshiper. <laughs> and so I just, I don't know, started seeking God, and I didn't have CDs. I didn't use CDs. You know, I hadn't really heard of silky music or anything. Like, my mom had heard of the Riveras, but we, didn't, we weren't really into it at that time. And... So I just started seeking God. Sometimes it felt like I was banging my head against the wall. And I was like, God, where are you? I don't feel you at all. And this is just hard. So I want a passion for you because without this, I am going to give up. And naturally speaking, I am not a very passionate, driven person. Ask my parents. As a five-year-old, I was just like, oh yeah, sure, it's okay with you, mommy. You know, I wasn't hard, like, even I, when I tried to be stubborn, I couldn't out-stubborn my brother. <laughs> and, but anyways, I started seeking the glory of God, and it's like, literally, it felt like heaven would come down to earth, like I'd have visions and stuff, and I just feel God so close, it's like you'd be so amazed at God that, uh, it's like you couldn't even talk, just like, uh, it's in being in that place about being still and knowing He is God. And... So that was just some amazing times, those early days, and it's like sometimes maybe I fell away for a day or two, but I always had a set time at 7 o'clock. I mean, sometimes I got legalistic about it, but the Lord had to get me out of that mindset, although I just experienced God, and so I guess I just had a lot of trouble hearing God, but anyways, as I was seeking the glory, I realized that you don't have to, like, when you pray for people... You don't have to be in an anointing or in the glory or whatever, but you can release it because, you know why? Because the King of Glory lives in you. And when the King of Glory lives in you, He wants out. And so I tried, I thought about this, I think I heard about this, the Lord is speaking to me about this, and so I, I, one time I got a word of knowledge for right knee being healed. And pastor acknowledged it was right on, but didn't allow me to give it, so I was kind of grieved, but anyways, there was somebody who came up afterwards, and her 
heard that I got the word of knowledge somehow or another. Maybe she overheard it when I was telling like one of the ushers or pastor or whatever. I don't know. And so I did. I told her that. I don't know. She, she came to me, and so she said, it's, "Well, it's not my right knee, but it's my right foot." And so I, I loosed the glory of the Lord because He lives in me, and I could do that. It's just releasing the kingdom. And so since her foot was crushed in the car accident, it was healed properly. So I asked her to try it out, and she said, "It's good." And that's just God. And so it's like things, you know. Uh, Jesus told us to pray on earth as it is in heaven. And so I've been, you know, what does that mean? Like, what's in heaven? And it's like, God's in heaven, and you know, His manifest presence is in heaven, and like, you know, worship's in heaven too, and there isn't any sickness. So the key for breakthrough um, is being in the glory and the light of Jesus. Like, His kingdom, uh, like, heaven coming down to earth. We don't have to go to heaven. You know, some, so many people look forward to that, but it's like Jesus' mindset is just opposite of bringing heaven down to earth. And so that's and that's the glory. And it's like, um, the glory is not just some substance, weird spiritual thing. Um, it's, it's the Lord himself. Because like, I remember in the Psalms it says, You are the glory, and you are the lifter of my head. And it's like, that's so, so revelationary, like, revolutionary thinking where it's just, it doesn't fit in your box, that God himself is the glory. And so it's like, remember even in the beginning, um, Genesis... Like, how can 
doing the same thing here. Obviously, if you're under, like, you're covering under feathers, like the glory, and you're under his wing, it's kind of like doing the same thing. So, obviously, he's trying to say something here in the fall. And you will, thou shalt trust. Uh, seek, flee for protection, but trust me, you can find in God. His truth. What is his truth? Firmness, faithfulness. Oh, I got it. It's like, you know, his truth. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. So his truth is his faithfulness, his firmness. His sureness and my reliability. So it's basically it's who God is. That's how you can rely on Him. That's how you can put your trust in Him because you know Him, you know His glory. And it says that will be your shield and buckler. So what's a shield? Hmm. I don't quite understand this. Something piercing hook barb, meaning dubious. Cold snow shield, large shield, buckler shield. That's an interesting. I think that's something to ponder there. Like I don't have, you know, just continue to ponder this. Like I don't have all the answers in here. So I look at the word buckler. And well, it's not a question. It just means buckler. So a buckler is uh, a small shield. It's like something like. It's another covering that I'm talking about. So, and surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the sun pestilence. What is deliver? Oh, that's an interesting word. I've seen this before. It's, oh, it's very similar to that word. Not proud. Very similar to the other word that I saw. I just don't remember which one. The shadow. Fail. It's like the ending part is very similar. So I wonder what that's about. Oh, you know, like, anyways, I should probably wrap it up soon. But the truth shall be your shield and buckle.
do we really know Jesus as the light of the world? Like we think we do, but it's just kind of a, yeah, so, um, the church answer would be, yeah, yeah, Jesus is the light of the world, but do we really know what that means? Do we really know what it means that he is the glory? Uh, do we know him as the lifter of our head? Do we know him as um, Jehovah Rapha, the healer? Do we know him as do we know him of all his names and stuff? And like maybe we know him this way, like yeah, we can categorize him in our brain, but has it really, you know, do we have a revelation from the Spirit of God about who, what he really is? So, he will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. What is his salvation, though? Show. You know what that word show means? It means like to literally to see with the eyes, to have vision, to inspect, to look upon, to watch, to look out, to find, to observe, to consider, to give attention, to discern, to distinguish, to gaze at, um, to be made visible, to show. I mean, this is kind of interesting, like, you know, it's not just no hearing about a salvation, knowing it's salvation, but it's about, like, seeing it. And especially since I'm a very visual person, I draw a lot, I like to describe what I see, you know, I'm very good at writing stories that way. Um, that's just, like, so amazing to me. Oh, here's another meaning to it, to look at one's face, to look at each other. Wow. Of course, these are different um, tenses that they could be used in. So we don't know how, how many reply actually in this case. So, oh, look at this. I will show him my salvation. Yeshua. Wow. It's Yeshua. It's Jesus. God, that's amazing. It's just that because Jesus, he's, it's not salvation is not just a little substance thing or thing that happens to you. I mean, it's Jesus himself. You get to be shown Jesus. Wow. Well for salvation, deliverance. Well for prosperity and victory. That's what it means. Wow. But anyway, what's the end of Psalm 91? You know, maybe this discussion, I mean, I didn't plan, and didn't really know what I was going to talk about. I thought I was going to talk about the glory of God. You know, I was talking about that, and it kind of led into other things. But, you know, this is how the way it ended up. So, like, uh, comment below if, you know, if you've had any revelation on the Word of God, or what's been jumping out scripture lately, or anything that I said that really helped you. I mean, just let me know. So, I'm signing off.